that these things end um, is either one one side withdraws or the, the other side um, capitulates, or uh, there's a ceasefire of some sort. And there was some talk of that um, yesterday. But you, you want a ceasefire when your when your troops are in the best positions. Mm -hmm. So for Putin to take a ceasefire now would be um, pretty pointless because he he, he would have troops. Uh, uh, well away from their home bases that have to be sustained and looked after, but without any strategic targets holding in Zelensky in position in Kiev. So uh, what you will see it, it, as the position becomes clearer is more and more calls for, for ceasefires. Analysts have been predicting the outcomes of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and despite disagreement over who will prevail, many agree on one thing, the next 48 hours will be decisive. Lawrence Friedman is a professor of war studies at King's College London. He joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. You've written that, that Russia's army may not be as formidable <clears throat> as anticipated. What makes you say that? Well, it, it's, it's still a very formidable army, but it uh, hasn't been deployed very effectively and the tactics and strategy have been quite strange. And also, and, and this may not be necessarily the army's fault, They've underestimated the scale of resistance they would face and the ease with which they would make breakthroughs. Um, so it's, it, it, it's, uh, uh, it doesn't tell us necessarily what's going to happen in the future, uh, but they've lost the, the initiative uh, and they've created uh, a strong uh, Ukrainian uh, sense of, of, of resistance and determination that is going to make it even harder for them, even if they... Uh, managed to succeed uh, and take some of the uh, major cities of Ukraine. You say that the Russians have underestimated the scale of the resistance in Ukraine, but how sustainable is that resistance really going to be going forward, particularly given the might of, of the Russian army that isn't yet, hasn't yet been deployed, that is kind of waiting in the wings? How much longer can Ukraine resist? Well, first, quite a lot of the might of the, of the Russian army has been deployed. It, it's true that there's, there's a lot in reserve and still to come, and some of the heavier stuff is still to come, but it's not as if this is just pinpricked. Um, the point is, um, you've got to look at this in, in stages. Uh, there's, there's a question of resistance uh, against the armour, against uh, the attacks on the cities. It's very difficult, actually, to take cities, even if you, you, you blast your way through them and mm. cause tremendous carnage in the process. This isn't an easy operation to do. Even if they succeed in that, it doesn't stop there. You have an insurgency. There's a long border uh, with Western countries. Uh, it wouldn't be very hard to sustain an insurgency. And what we now know is you have an armed population uh, which is fired up. It's not demoralized. It's, it's passionate at what it's doing. It's celebrating its heroes. Um, and th this is quite a, a tall order to take on. Russia's uh, you know, got a lot of forces, but it hasn't got enough. This is a country the size um, of France, a population of over 40 million. Uh, it's not an easy thing to, to, to occupy. So I think the Russians actually have got some pretty hard choices in front of them as, as they try to go forward. You say that Russia has, has lost the initiative. How much does that matter in terms of military strategy? How much do the first few days of a war set the tone uh, for, for the outcome? Well, you'd normally assume, um, you know, given that the Russians have had months to prepare for this, I mean, the build-up started uh, last year, uh, they've been steadily augmenting their forces at the front, they've been getting them alert. So you would have thought that they had a plan uh, about how to move very quickly to their key targets and take them. But I think there was a degree of arrogance uh, that took over there. So instead of having a decisive uh, day or so in which you know, to all extents and purposes, it might have seemed to be over uh, and, and Ukraine beaten. You've got a, a completely opposite impression that, uh, uh, that they're the ones whose operations are stalled. They still haven't taken a major city. So I, I think uh, you would normally assume that, that, that everything would be put into making sure the first day or so uh, saw major military achievements, major strategic targets acquired, and this hasn't happened. The stakes are very high for Vladimir Putin, and we know that he does not like the prospect of humiliation, but humiliation is potentially in the offing here. Uh, is there a way for troops to be withdrawn without Vladimir Putin losing face? No, 
I mean, he's he's committed. This is his war. He's committed to it, and that's why it's wise to assume um, that the, whatever problems they faced in the first few days that that, um, that they will sort of creep away. Um, so uh, I don't think he's going to give up or expect his forces to give up. But he has a problem about how he takes it forward. This isn't this isn't a popular war in Russia. Yeah. But then th- that's potentially very dangerous then. If, he, if there's very, no way for very, him to withdraw, what's, what's he going to do? Continue until, uh, until the bitter end? I think what, so the way that these things end um, is either one, one side withdraws or the, the other side um, capitulates, or uh, there's a ceasefire of some sort. And there was some talk of that um, yesterday. But you, you want a ceasefire when, you're, when your troops are in the best positions. Mm. So for Putin to take a ceasefire now would be... Um, pretty pointless because he, he, he would have troops uh, uh, well away from their home bases that have to be sustained and looked after, but without any strategic targets holding in Zelensky in position in Kiev. So uh, what you will see it, it, as the position becomes clearer is more and more calls for, for ceasefires, probably from the side that uh, looks like it's got the initiative at any particular point. And at some point, you know, the, the Putin and those around him and the, and the Russian military will have to assess where they are and what they're prepared to do to take this this further. Because, I mean, it, it, the problem with this war from uh, Putin's mm-hmm. perspective from the start is it was a totally misplaced political strategy. Yes. Uh, and you, you, though we, we talk about military capabilities and military strategy, you've got to get the politics right as well. And, and um, the, that's, the, that's the, the, the dilemma that they now face. And Absolutely. Putin has yet been a, a, an, unable to admit to, to the problems with, with the politics. Well, the, the idea of him ever admitting to problems with anything, uh, it, seems, it seems quite fantastical. Uh, thank you so much for that. That is Lawrence Friedman, Professor of War Studies at King's College London. Thank you.